welcome everybody to Pop Those Presents. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Brent Butler, and uh, we're here again with Azra. I got her new song, Helen Back, playing in the background. Uh, it's really fun. How's it going over there? Hello, it's going. How are you? I'm very good. It's cool to talk to you. This is, I think, our third official interview, I want to say. Yes, yes. I know. So the, it's our third. Yeah. The first one was in the old Poptus offices in New York City. The second one was in a recording studio out in North Hollywood. Yep. And now I'm in New Jersey right now. You're in LA. And I'm and, in LA. Uh, and we're doing our uh, our coronavirus era remote uh, interview. Live. Yeah. I feel like I feel like our interviews are like in all these cool places. Thanks for joining us and doing this, especially with your uh, your new song out. And I guess we should address those awesome glasses that you're wearing because oh, you'll be wearing the you're wearing those in the lyric video. Yes, I am. So I figured I'd make an entrance with this six dimension glass. Like I can. Uh, we were talking a little bit on Facebook. You've got the new single Helen back, uh, and now hey uh, and, and <laughs> I think that's better. Rock- and you rock those glasses in the in the lyric video. Yeah, so I figured I'd make a little entrance with the situation, but yes, I like I seeing you cool. with my pure eyes. Actually, I, I don't blame you. <laughs> Tell us a bit more about the song "Hell and Back." So "Hell and Back" is basically it's a bounce back song. It's a song about just empowerment and um, so easy for us to celebrate the wins and the little victories and and the little the good news that we hear. But yeah. when it comes to all the setbacks and all the um, all the not so positive ones, you know, we don't know how and what we're supposed to do with them. So oftentimes we kind of fall into like, you know, just coping with it in in our own ways. And many times it's not always the positive coping mechanism. So this song, Helen Back is all about like, hey guys, you know, let's figure out a way to kind of understand that in life, you know, there's, it's not always going to be positive. The song is basically celebrating that and kind of taking that into um, our own matters and then being like, that's what makes us so powerful because we are able to accept the negatives, accept the positives, and then turn them into our own personal power to just like own it. You know what I mean? I like that a lot. The themes, the themes here about like going through hardship and coming out stronger. uh, I I feel like that's been present in a lot of your music. The latest singles that I've heard from you, including Helen Back. Uh, much different musically. And I have to say, I really dig it. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I'd say musically, like it, it may sound just a little different, but the whole message and the ethos behind it, it's, it's very, it's consistent, right? It's all about substance pop and just being able to like speak your truth and just own and be unapologetic about like who you are and what you stand for and just being proud of it. I love that. When you say yeah. substance pop, can you, uh, subs- I like this phrase. I saw an article covering you that, that, that said you're the LA substance pop. And yes. to me, to me, that has, uh, some drug implications. That's what my mom said. She was just like, what, <laughs> what do you mean substance pop? And I was like, mom, what do you think it means? Substance pop basically it's it's not really drug related at all, but it's all about just like having depth. So I know we talked about this in our previous, um, you know, chats before, but I'm like obsessed with the idea of like what the meaning behind things, you know, like the whole concept of like, there's more than meets the eye. Um, and I think that whole obsession came from my experience with my glaucoma when I had it, when I was like young, I was diagnosed with glaucoma and I couldn't see out of my right eye for a while. And I was temporarily blind. And that kind of, you know, led me to figure out like what else is, what else is out there and figure out, you know, just finding peace within myself. And in order to do that, like when you, when you literally can't see out of this eye, like I had to look within and just figure it out. And that's when I realized I'm like, wow, you know, there's so much more than what you see. And since then I've just kind of been chasing that depth and that substance So when it comes to music, I like to make music that's like catchy, it has hooks and it's super melodic, but it has to have meaning. If music doesn't really have meaning or purpose, then it's kind of, to me, it's like an empty can. Very well put. That said, what about songs with no lyrics? I think that's just as amazing. If you think about music, music isn't just about lyrics, right? It's like, it's an exchange of frequency and energy. So yeah, I mean, a song can be substance 
pop or it can have substance without lyrics. It just depends on like, I don't know, I guess how it was put together and how the listener kind of takes it and make it their own. True. Yeah. Well, let us know what you think. If you think that music can have substance <laughs> without lyrics, tell us in the comments below. And if you think substance pop is pop music made while under the influence of substances, also let us know your favorite <laughs> substances in the comments below. Don't tell my mom. <laughs> yeah, don't don't tell her mom, please. It's like every time we do an interview, so people immediately, they go to your mom and you get in tons I know, of trouble. Seriously. And then she calls me, she goes, Clara? You talking I'm like, about yeah, mom, what's up? <laughs> yeah, and then she'll be like, she, I know, she'll be like, pop this again. And then she'll be like, oh, okay. She just has a way of just keeping things very like, calm and it just yeah. like i know what she's trying to do but anyway i love you mom <laughs> <laughs> nice save nice save yes yeah uh so what what next is planned right because there is the lyric video do you have something planned for the for the full live action video is that going to happen i've talked to a lot of artists right now that are just kind of shooting stuff themselves on their phones mm -hmm. um or if you're like me you just lay in bed all day with <gasps> crippling depression well, I mean, I've definitely been, I definitely haven't been too idle since COVID and the pandemic. I've been busier than ever. I think the only thing that's missing is like what I love the most, which is actually going out there and performing. But other than that, I've been, you know, perform doing streaming sessions, uh, streaming yeah. like concerts. Um, and then, you know, for Helen Back and my other music, um, Helen Back, first of all, the lyric video is out and stay tuned for the actual music video so that's tbd um but i've also been working on some new music also some some new stuff so for that oh, i mean i ooh. yeah so i've been in the studio you know practicing that social distancing like wearing face masks but then like when i'm actually in the booth i don't have to so you know i've just been living in the booth <laughs> yeah I, I was gonna ask you like what's the studio scene out there and stuff because last mm -hmm. time you know you were sort of in and out of a few spots and and we conducted a whole interview in there which made me feel very cool and you know for actors and stuff a lot of that is just completely on pause but i was wondering yeah. you know for for musicians going into the studio are you still able to do you know most of what you would either I, I, otherwise thankfully yes um we are i mean for me and my team it's been it's been pretty awesome because you know we don't i mean we have a studio so the production team that i'm working with they actually have a studio um, in North Hollywood and it's, it's very like safe, sanitized. And then everybody that comes into the studio um, in like the lounge, like the studio area, we all wear face masks. And then okay. when we need, when I need to like step into the booth to record my, uh, my engineer, he would just like literally sanitize like every time, like someone goes in and out or like, if I'm, if I like step out for a little bit, he'll just go and like, help sanitize um, the, the booth and the mic and the pot filter and everything. So yeah, we've been pretty, pretty blessed um, that we have that set up. And how do you like the, the streaming performances? Well, at first I kind of had mixed feelings because, you know, I'm so used to, and I, I, I thrive on like just being physically in the same room and like in front of other people, just connecting with everybody. So in the beginning, it was just kind of like, Oh, you know, I'm kind of here. And then like, there's people, on the other side of the interweb. So it felt a little funky, but then I realized that, you know, like as, as different as it is in terms of format, you are actually connecting with people because you don't physically have to be in a room to feel that frequency and that energy. You know, I've definitely gotten used to it. Um, it also helped me like get better at just like technical things, like having a setup, man, that is not an easy thing. <laughs> so props to all the engineers and all the techies out there. Well, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, but you started on like piano, right? Yeah, I did. I was going to say for a song like Helen Back, a brand mm -hmm. new single, check it out everywhere. That's like a very like the production is very like pop kind of tropical house vibes with like a lot of sort of like samples. How do you is that one that you're able to do on these live streams or do you do you just do like a backing track or how would that yeah. work? For that, uh, we just use the back backing track, I think, you know, cool. um, yeah, and, and it's it's worked out pretty well. but. You know, with like these streaming platforms and stuff, like there's ways I found out that like you can actually play the song in the background yeah. and then stream it at the same time. So it's, it comes out super nicely mixed, which is so cool. So yeah, we've definitely tried that. Um, I've, have I done an acoustic 
piano. I haven't done an acoustic piano performance for Hell, Hell and Back. Hell and Back, a very um, appropriate sentiment uh, for 2020, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. When did you write the song? Was this like a premonition or? You know, I've been asked that question before. And as much as I want to say, oh, I wrote it this year, right as, as soon as quarantine happened. No, I actually wrote this song, co-wrote it um, before quarantine, like sometime last year. And it's crazy how like how how fitting it is for this time. And I truly felt that when I was looking at different songs that I wanted to release, um, Helen Back really like touched me. And I was like, I think this is a song. It's, it's a song of hope. It's a song of acceptance. It's a song of bounce back and just owning your personal power, regardless of the hardships and the, the good stuff that we deal with. Um, so yeah, so I felt like it was perfect um, to kind of release to everybody and the world um, to hopefully shine some light in the midst of all this stuff that's happening. What's coming out next for you? What are you working on? Is Helen back going to be part of a larger project? Just kind of experimenting? Definitely working on new music. Um, I plan to release some more music, so stay tuned. Um, and then I think I think my goal for this year, just to make the best out of you know all this that's happening, is I just want to get closer to my supporters and my fans and just be able to be there for people. Um, I think, you know, with Helen back too, I know there's so many, you know, circumstances where people are like, oh, you, sh you like, how are you going to release music? How are you going to shoot music videos in this place? But all of us artists are making it work and finding ways to connect with our audience. And so for me, for the rest of this year, like, you know, definitely look out for new music, but I'm going to, you know, try my best and find more ways to be like active, more active on social media get on streaming more. Um, I actually did, uh, I had a show that I did. It was like a streaming show. Um, I did like two seasons of it earlier this year uh, on Next. And it's a streaming platform for musicians. And I think I'm going to start the third season very soon. Check it out. Right, you got to tell me about this because what? so it was like, were you like writing like little episodes for yourself? Was it like a fictional? Oh, yeah. Was there a plot? And there's a plot. You're gonna have to. Can we, come can on we go and back you. and binge? Can we binge episodes, or do you have to see them when they come out? You can actually binge. It's on my YouTube channel. Um, oh, my you know, God. you you'll see like every episode because I'm doing it at home and I'm trying to learn. Like I'm still trying to learn how to be technical with all my setup. So you'll see that like the first couple episodes are like, okay, okay. So I'm cutting off a little bit, but then like it gets a little better and better. Yes. Yeah, so I put together a structure for the show and then we try to like have a little theme for every show. Um, first season, I like to call it, it was all about like focusing on different types of like emotions. And then, you know, I'll share some songs and we'll have some live chats with people and yeah. What's the show called? Six Dimension. So check it out on Next the streaming yeah. platform for musicians. Yeah, Sixth I'll put dimension. up the link. That's I'll put up the link on my Instagram once it's ready to go. That's really fun. And <laughs> and you've got a you've got a season 3 in mind. Yes, yes. Maybe you'd want to come through, Brent. Absolutely. I would yeah. love it. I could I could be like the kooky neighbor who pops in and he's like, "My shower doesn't work and I need the bar <laughs> like I don't know." Yeah. We'll, we'll figure out we'll the figure plot. We're still working yeah. on it. But uh, but yeah, connecting with fans and stuff should be really fun. You know, she wants to support you fans. So yeah. if you need to borrow 20 bucks or something, just DM Azra. So get you some of that substance pop. <laughs> <laughs> that good, good. I can't, I can't, I can't, <laughs> friend, I can't. Every time, it's, it's, it's such a pleasure. It's so fun, you know, connecting with you and Pop Dust every time. You know, you guys are really awesome. Again, I, I feel like, Oh, yes. Go on. I feel like, you know, especially during COVID, I know, you know, things have not been the easiest for many of us. You know, I think all of us are like dealing with different types of struggles, um, whether it be, you know, like mental, emotional, financial, feeling loneliness, like anything that may be. I think all of us are just dealing with these things during this confusing time. And as artists, I feel so strongly like, I realize how much support, like as much as I love supporting my supporters and my audience, I realize how powerful it is to hear from, from you guys, like our fans and our supporters and our followers. Like it means so much that you guys are, you know, giving an F about our work, like our music, and then just 
connecting with us um, through that. So, you know, just want to say I appreciate all of you guys for being there for us. Well, that's a that's a beautiful message. Um, I think that's a great moment to to end on. Azra, thank you so much for spending time with us. So thank you for being here uh, with us. Thank uh, you for, for having me. It's been Pop Does Presents Quarantine Edition with Azra, the Azra official everywhere. And your new single, Hell and Back, is a hell of a lot of fun and is available everywhere. Thank you. Everywhere.